Welcome, Chairman of the Board, Barnabas Aid, John Marsh. Good morning. On behalf of Barnabas Fund and Dr. Patrick Sigdeo, our founder, who is not able to attend today because of the COVID travel restrictions, I would like to welcome you to this session. I'm John Marsh, the chairman of the board of Barnabas Aid USA, a division of Barnabas Fund, which is a crucial ministry to the persecuted church around the world. Recently, Barnabas Aid was circulated a petition for the US government to recognize the Armenian genocide, and we were very pleased that the Biden administration acknowledged the genocide. Furthering that contextual setting for this morning's topic, we are very pleased to have with us the former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. Mr. Pompeo was instrumental in moving the US government in the direction of acknowledging the fundamental rights of peoples affected by the loss of religious liberty, which provides an instrumental rationale for genocide. In a recent article championing these values, Mr. Pompeo stated, there is no right more fundamental to a free society than the free practice of religion. Along with property rights, religious liberty is the cornerstone of our unalienable rights. To deny either is to lose the legitimacy of our republic. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary Pompeo. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good, good morning, everyone. This is amazing and wonderful. I want to thank you, John, for the kind introduction. I also want to thank uh, my friend, longtime friend. He was a governor. I was just a congressman from Kansas. Uh, now Ambassador Sam Brownback and Cortina Lantros Sweat for organizing this gathering. It's important. Thank you all for being here today. I mean that. I, I wouldn't have missed it for anything. Uh, we worked hard at the State Department during my uh, thousand days to build out an understanding about religious freedom in the world. We created what we called the ministerials. Many of you would have attended them. These were the largest human rights events ever held at the United States Department of State. We brought people from all across the globe together to dedicate themselves to championing religious freedom, the very cause that brings you here all this morning. This summit, this gathering, this lovely God-driven gathering is a continuation of that work. Thank you for being part of it. I, uh, I'm now an unemployed former diplomat but I still know that promoting and safeguarding religious freedom abroad was truly a cornerstone of the work that our administration did in foreign policy. And it, it must always be an essential element of what we do in our efforts to fight against authoritarianism around the globe. You see the demands for religious freedom even in places like Cuba as we sit here today. And I, I was asked to speak for just a few minutes on the subject of genocide and preventing that and then helping nations and peoples recover from religious cleansing. This is a topic that is close to my heart as a former fifth grade Sunday school teacher, as someone who takes his faith seriously. We, we know this work matters to people all around the world. You know, perhaps the worst contemporary example has been, you've, you've heard much about today, it's the oppression and killing of Uyghurs in China by the Chinese Communist Party. The State Department built an entire apparatus to get to the place where we could declare that Chinese communists is in fact doing to the Uyghurs what we know to be genocide. It, uh, it took us till nearly the end of the administration to get there, uh, and uh, because there was lots of discussion. One doesn't make such a declaration lightly because a declaration like this is serious. It doesn't happen often, it is not frequent, and it is not just symbolic. It is a cause for action. And I hope that the present administration will do just that and take action to stop what rivals happened in Germany in the 1930s. To date, the current administration indicated its central focus with respect to China, and indeed the rest of the world may well be in something like climate change, relegating religious liberty to a side issue. This is unfortunate. In my view, it is foolish. 
and it would be a grave mistake to prioritize climate change at the expense of allowing religious oppression to fester and grow throughout the world. There is no right more fundamental to a society than the free practice of religion. We know this. We know that when governments want to oppress, this is where they begin, behind the walls of prisons and persecuted before our very eyes in places like China, Iran, Cuba, North Korea, are tens of thousands of people whose only crime was that they wanted to worship their God in their own way. No country that denies freedom religious freedom, can ever rightly claim to be good in some other way. There's no making up for that. And no person can ever be true to any faith that believes in the dignity of human life if they do not act out of concern for those whose dignity is assailed because of their faith. It, it's why we worked on this so hard. It's why our principle of freedom of religion matters here at home and to the world. It's why I created the Unalienable Rights Commission to reground our foreign policy, how we talked about human rights at the Department of State. Look, in, in China, under the rule of the Chinese Communist Party, we see, we can all see it, we can feel it, we know these people. It's a modern day example of a government that cares so little for people's inherent freedoms and dismisses their unique dignity that it is unimaginable to most of us. Thin claims of religious extremism have been invoked by the Communist Party there to justify this oppression. You know this, you've worked in this field. There's always a reason, but the ongoing, shocking, indeed horrifying treatment of the Uyghur population being rounded up in Xinjiang province and placed into these truly Orwellian concentration camps where the people are surveilled at all times, placed in slave labor, forced to conduct abortions and sterilization. This should strike at the heart of every human being and every American who cares or claims to care about freedom in the world. This echoes the tyranny and persecution of the peoples that they've persecuted for so long in places like Tibet, and certainly what we've seen in the past months in Hong Kong as well. And we know this, Christians throughout China continue to suffer under the CCP's rule. Congregations that are not sanctioned, approved, and monitored by the CCP are outlawed, and any scripture not approved by the party is deemed unlawful. And those who might pursue that, thrown in jail. This example, the Chinese example, makes the mark for what I was asked to talk about today. It should clarify for all of us that a society that lacks regard for religious liberty will soon see all political liberties stamped out, they will disappear, and then of course much, much worse, things like genocide. It's that very realization that religious liberty must be carefully guarded that can help us prevent genocide from happening. It is foundational. When, people's lose, when people lose their capacity to practice their faith, authoritarian regimes will dominate. That basic truth today is being shown in China. Our American founders understood that, that when nations disregard religious freedom, tyranny absolutely will soon follow. Look, ending this isn't easy. These are hard problem sets. Earlier this month, the CCP celebrated its 100th anniversary with familiar totalitarian pageantry. Displays of hardware, cheering, red scarf, youth, nationwide crackdown on dissidents to ensure that they had political security. General Secretary Xi's message to the world was simple. Any foreign force that attempts to bully, oppress, or subjugate China will find themselves on a collision course with a great wall of steel. We should be that steel. We should be that backbone. We should be that force that opposes what they're doing to these peoples in this place that is not so far from our very shores. Look, they're not easily gonna relent unless we all continue. Our efforts in the Trump administration were to rally the world against this oppression. And if the world does this, if we get it right, China, and we don't coddle China, I'm confident we'll prevail. And we'll prevail not only on behalf of security around the world, but on behalf of these people that are oppressed. Look, recovery is tough. We know this. Rwanda has been on a long path, as a good example, a long path to recovery and reconciliation. But you know, the perhaps greatest model for such recovery is found with the Jewish people in the state of Israel. In the wake of the greatest genocide in human history, the world came together to restore the Jewish people's homeland in Israel. But some 75 years later, the work is still ongoing. It's in a much better place. But for example, the Jewish population is still lower today than levels before the Holocaust and may not fully recover until 2050. I was so happy today to see that the Emiratis had opened their embassy just today in Tel Aviv. A remarkable set of leaders 
understanding that religious freedom across all faiths, Muslim, Jewish, Christian, truly matters. Look, the Abraham Accords are but one example, but recovery from religious cleansing must be rooted in remembering that the horrible acts took place and never forgetting. We talk about not forgetting that such acts matter. It's why places like Yad Vashem in Israel and the Holocaust Museum, not too far from where we're standing today, remind us of the horrors of genocide. But they also remind us of the glory that the Lord is watching over us and that recovery from genocide is absolutely necessary and possible. We've got to do the hard work. The fact that we gather here today while genocide is ongoing in China and other places around the world demonstrates that the hard work of each of you matters. And we always say, never again. Each of us does that. But when any country, including the United States, tolerates tyranny, history will repeat itself. It's why we have to continue the good work that brings you all here together today, preserving religious liberty and fighting for those religious freedoms in every single corner of the world. Thank you. I wanna say thank you to each of you. Thank you for your important work protecting religious freedom. I pray each and every day for the success of your mission and the work that you do to support each other in delivering religious freedom to every human being in the world. May the Lord bless your work. I look forward to seeing you. Keep at it, we will prevail. Religious freedom matters. Thank you for everything you all do.